just got to find a sermon to fit my illustration. Amen. But it was kind of amazing. I was down here waiting at uh, the cow's nest, and it just suddenly crossed my mind that I had been looking at something like this, thousands of bills trying to scale it. And it's like the Lord brought it to my remembrance. Anybody know anything about answered prayer?
Now, back to that other verse, bro. Back it up one verse there, bro. That word regard. See that word regard in the King James Version of the Bible? I have this amazing Bible study software that I can click on a certain link and that Bible study software will give me the Hebrew word. And I did that and to my amazement I found just looking through the scripture studying that word regard that word in the Hebrew is also translated gaze. Gaze. Everybody say gaze. gaze. And I knew a place in the Bible that's always had a fascination for me about the word gaze. And it was in the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter, where God came down on Mount Sinai and you know, there was lightning and thundering and dark clouds and earthquake and that mountain was shaken because Almighty God had descended upon it and the three million people were down at the bottom of the mountain and, and, and they were cowering and trembling and, and Moses uh, heard a voice sound like a trumpet and God said, come on up here Moses, I'm going to talk to you. All right. I don't know about you, but that was really something that I would But before Moses went up the mountain, God told him to set bounds around the base of the mountain to keep anybody from coming up here, lest they come up here and gaze. All right. Gaze. You know, there's something in every one of us that we have a curiosity for spiritual things. Come on. And for some reason, God don't want curiosity seekers coming up the mountain just, right. just to gaze. Good. Mm. Mm. Come on. I've been in the hospital a few times with a few elders, and I just didn't like people coming in and just gazing at me. All right. Yeah. 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 That'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not a good feeling. Right. And it is amazing that God doesn't want people to come looking for him. In the Old Testament. Now in the New Testament, the visible image of the invisible God is a whole lot different. The Bible says we're supposed to look to Jesus, the author and finish of our faith. The Bible says we're supposed to look for the second coming of Jesus. We're supposed to be in anticipation and look for him. But in the Old Testament, before God revealed himself in human flesh, it was a little bit different. I don't have time to explain all that. You just go study your Bible and you'll find out a little more about what you think you know that you may not know as much as you think you know. <laughs> because I've been there many times. <laughs> and I've had, to, I've had to say, well, I didn't know that. But God did not want curiosity seekers, people that were just wanted to see something out of curiosity. And there was bounds around the bottom of that mountain. And I've often wondered about Almighty God and how that no man has ever seen God, nor ever will see Him. If you're going to see God, you're going to have to see Him in the face of Jesus Christ. Hello. Amen. Ain't going to see Him any other way. Amen. He, he don't want you seeing Him. I don't blame Him. We don't have time to go into detail there, but I'm just pointing out that there's something in us that we got to get under control. Right. And that's being a busybody. You know what a busybody is? Somebody that's always looking at other people's affairs. You know, I'm so glad we don't have any busybody. Bodies all right. Everybody minds all the business around here. Ain't nobody on the phone saying, you know what I heard the other day? Right. Oh, let me tell you about what I, I found out about somebody in the church. And, oh, 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 we got to, we got to pray about this. <laughs> oh, this is among the churches. Church over there in Wichita. That church over there in Kansas City. And we just got all 
people with bright halos here this morning. Forgive me for my facetiousness. Forgive me for acting a fool this morning. Oh, folks, if we could mind our own business instead of trying to understand other people's business, we probably would be more pleased with the Lord. We probably could get our prayers in our strength. We probably could have a better prayer time. Instead of it being boring, it would be exciting because the Spirit would be there. Amen. You're struggling with things. It might be that you need to kind of tighten things up in your own relationship with God. But get rid of that natural curiosity that makes you want to look at things and see things and know things that you're not supposed to know. There's so many wonderful things that we can get to know. Why in the world do you want to get to know things that you don't need to know? It's like Paul said in the book of Ephesians. They were not even supposed to speak about the wicked things that Gentiles do in secret. All right. Good. I don't want to know. That's right. Yeah. And that word busybody, believe it or not, that word busybody is also translated Curious arts in Acts 19, where, you know, they had this great revival and there was all this occult material and there was these demon uh, books and all they that exercised themselves in curious arts brought their books and piled up and they burned the books. But it's quite amazing to me that the word curious, Cur you know, my mother, when she was bachelor years ago, her and uh, Lois Soap, that was her buddy, her, her and Lois, they both actually lived about the same time. And they got a Ouija board. Now this was back when the Ouija boards weren't I mean, we look at it now, and we know what a Ouija board is, but they didn't know much about a Ouija board. Yeah. It was a curious art. Yeah, it was. I just want to ask you a few questions. Yeah. What are the causes this to happen? It went along for a while until one day they decided to say, what, what power is behind the Ouija board? And when that Ouija board began to spell out the Actually, the ladies decided they wasn't going to fool with that anymore. Right. Well, I guess there's a lot of curious arts besides just Ouija boards, basically. I'm, I don't think there's anybody here that, well, maybe, maybe there is. I don't know. Be careful about this curiosity that you have about things that are really none of your business. Be careful about the devil luring you into, you know, trying to figure out what the future is by somebody looking at the tea leaves or looking at their crystal ball yeah, or reading the palm of your hand. Yeah, amen. Be careful about this curiosity like Saul had. He wanted to know what was going to happen the next day. He wanted to know whether he was going to survive the battle. And one of his men said, let's find a witch. Yeah. And she can tell us the future. I preach this out here this morning. You didn't look in your Bible to find out what the future holds. You didn't inquire of the Lord to find out what God wants you to do. Yeah. You don't need to spend your money on, on the time. Cards and I stand right here. I don't know how that works. I don't know any tarot, tarot cards or, or palm readers or, or uh, what, what's, what's the one? Does the newspaper have a uh, horse? Okay, they read about uh, every eye closed. How many reach your horse? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, these are people. I'm curious about things you don't need to be curious about. Yeah. The devil can get you. You ought to be curious.
curious about that book? Amen. That's right. Amen. You ought to be curious about what, what does that mean right there? Yeah. I need to get me one of those Bible, Bible, uh, computer Bible helps like Brother Trump said he had. Every one of us in this church ought to have all kind of study Bible. We ought to have all kind of concordances. We ought to have all kind of New Testament Greek dictionaries. Everybody in this church ought to have more than just a plain old Bible with no helps in it. You need to read the introduction to every book in the Bible. You need to look at those footnotes down there and, and try to figure things out and compare with Scripture with Scripture and know the Word of God. Because when you pass from this life, it's not going to be how much education you got or how many degrees you got. It's going to be how much you know about the Word of God. Amen. In fact, you can't really have success in life until you've really known and read and studied and studied and studied the Word of God over and over and over. We ought to be experts in the Word of God. All right. God's people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. I'm curious about it. Oh, we're curious about Facebook. We're curious about what's going on in Joe Blow's life. We're curious about the vacation that he went on. We're curious about, you know, that, that, that photo that he took of, of his food that he's eating. <laughs> you see, such display of pride and arrogance in all of your life. I mean, people will get their phone up. I just wanted to get over here and tell, tell everybody a few things. It's me. And they just sit there and grandstand for about an hour. <laughs> they want to tell you all that's happening in their life. They never tell you anything bad. It's always good. Anybody that tells you something, something bad, it's kind of unusual. Get in them. And they had the audacity to 
touch that ark. And they opened it up. And the Bible says they looked where they wasn't supposed to look. And 50,000 Church is not a place where we just go and get told how good we are. Church is a place where we're told the matter we ought to get a little better. Amen. Right. I hope that you understand that this is not one of those churches where you may go out the door with this good, warm, fuzzy feeling in your heart when you go out the door. You may go out the door feeling kind of kind of like you need to do better. Right. You may go out the door right. feeling challenged and right. saying, Oh, I've got to pray more. Yes. I've got to read my Bible. Yes. I've got to walk in the Spirit. Yes. I've got to be better. Yes. Because if all we did was pat you on the back and tell you how good you were, you would not be the man or the woman that God wants you to be. That's right. 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 Say amen. 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 Oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. There's, there's room for improvement in all of our lives. Amen. Right. It's supposed to be that we... Grow in grace. Right. And the light gets brighter and brighter as we yep. go along. Yeah. Come on. Right. The path of the justice has shine the light. It shines more and more until the perfect day. Right. Yep. Okay? All right. And there was another example of a carnal curiosity. that I'd like to bring to you. Amen. Remember that woman that was married to Lot? Amen. We never know her name. She's referred to as Lot's wife. Yeah. Yep. So I already know where I'm going. But now get the picture. Lot's wife had known what it was like to live like Abraham lived. Lot's wife had known what it's like to live in a tent. Yep. And trust me, folks, living in a tent's not near as good as living in a good house. All right. Her and her husband had reached a measure of success in some. The economic prosperity of that place was quite phenomenal. However, we this kind of grows along with prosperity, too. Oh, well, I thank God for the prosperity of this country, but folks, we look around and we see wickedness like we've never seen before. Right. Amen. And I'm not proposing to know what the solution is, but it's really sad. And out of the loop, just out of the loop, one day, they got a knock on the door. It's quite an experience. I don't have to go into detail, but you know your Bible? You know there were two angels that came to the door and said, this was all because Abraham prayed. You know, Abraham prayed. There's ten people in Sodom you won't destroy. Will you, God? Well, I guess there wasn't even ten people there, but God knew what Abraham wanted. And it's quite amazing that even though Abraham didn't say, God, spare my nephew Lot and his family, yet God knew in Abraham's heart that's really what he was yeah. wanting. That's right. And God in his goodness, I tell you, we've got a good God. I don't care what anybody says about God. He is good. He is better to us than we deserve. Yeah. And you don't need to come around here telling me about how bad God is because I've already got my mind made up. And it's hard for me to unbelieve something that's going way down deep in my heart. All right, right. I'm going to have some experiences that don't, that don't make God look good. But I'm telling you, if there's something way down on the inside of my spirit that I won't ever be able to get loose from. Yeah. And that's one of them. Right. God is good. Yeah, so God just went ahead and answered Abraham's prayer. 
Congratulations, brother. Uh, you need to get pack your bags. You need to be out of here by sunrise. Huh? Uh, they lingered. And the scripture says the angels came and got by the hands. Well, when an angel gets a hold of your hand, it's hard to get loose. But if somebody come knocking on your door and telling you that the people's lips will be destroyed, you'd be the same way. Amen. Especially before they had atomic bombs. Right. All right. Anyway, grabbed them by the hand. The last thing the angel said to him was, whatever you do, don't look back. Don't look back. Now, I, I don't know the whole, what all happened. But I have a picture in my mind. Maybe I'm wrong. Been wrong before. But is it possible that as they were about to go over that mountain range or that mountain where they would no longer see the city of Sodom? Because it is in a fertile plain and there's mountains all the way around where we think Sodom and Gomorrah was. There might have been some flashes of lightning. There might have been some explosions. There might have been some noise. I mean, you know, it would be hard to not turn around and look back. All right? What are the consequences of looking back? The consequences of looking at stuff. The consequence of just a calm curiosity. I wonder what it'd be like. I wonder what it would be like. Oh, the devil would love for you to think that you are not being fulfilled. The devil would love to make you feel that you're missing something real important. The devil would love to make you think that the world is just passing you on by. You're missing out on all this good stuff. Folks, if God didn't give it to you, it's not going to be good for you. If God is not in it, try your best to love what God... I, you know, I like what it says about Job. It says that he not only feared God, but he eschewed evil. Think about that. He hated what God hated. He avoided what God didn't like. He eschewed evil. He stayed away from those kind of things. Amen. I think it'd be good for us to stay away from the world. I think it'd be good for us to stay away from things that the devil would like to make us curious about. Yeah. It would hurt some of you to shut down your Facebook page so you could spend time with God in prayer. Well, glory to God. And to make it even more amazing, in Luke, the 19th chapter, Jesus makes the statement, remember Lot's wife. Remember this woman that lost Simply because she had to get one glass of good luck, which the angels had not to do. She turned around and looked back, and the scripture says she became a pillar of salt. And to this day, there is in Israel, on one of those mountains over the Dead Sea, a rock formation that is called Lot's wife. And it's believed that Jesus was referring to that rock formation. It is the very place where somehow or another, well, the judgment of God comes in many different forms. And he turned to a pillar of salt he is one of the most utterly amazing things that took place. Whether or not it was just that the salt was raining down and uh, it, 
it just encased her body, or whether she just was totally just transfixed in a moment of time, it's hard to understand exactly what, I wasn't there. I don't have a Bible commentator that can tell me exactly what took place. But whatever it was, folks, it was good. Because her husband and her daughters were without their mother. And they, she did, she did not survive the situation. She died like the Sodomites died. She died, and there's people in the church that are going to die like the world died. There's people in the church right here sitting in this congregation. You got caught up in the things of the world. And the old saying is, curiosity, kill the cat. And there is something about curiosity that you are having a problem with. And it's going to destroy you. And you're going to be turned to something worse than a pillar of salt. You're going to be left behind.
There's an old preacher by the name of, he was a pastor in, he, he preached in Texas camp many years ago. His name was Dudley. Remember Brother Dudley? Pastor, superintendent in Canada. Yeah. What was his first name? I don't know, I thought his initials were TB. Anyway, he was preaching in a Texas camp meeting. I remember as a kid listening to him. He said one night, he got a phone call from somebody. Uh, about needing prayer. They're about to die. Backslide. Strange child of God. Somebody that walked away from the truth. Somebody that no longer prayed. They knew they ought to pray. They knew they ought to be in church. They knew they ought to be reading the Bible. But they just ain't going to do it. All right. <coughs> and he got up and please overcoat on because it's it was snowing outside. It was ice all over the place. He went to that man's bedside and began to pray. And while he was praying, suddenly he remembered. Several years ago, this man had a car wreck. And it was as if God was telling him, I was reaching for him then. He kept on praying. And he remembered when the man had another experience in his life where it looked like we got the chastity, trying to bring him back. But he kept on praying. Kept on praying, and praying, and praying. And talking about the third or fourth time of an event that God had brought back to Brother Dudley's mind. For this man, God was telling him, I tried to save you then. I tried to save you now. I tried to save you here. I tried to save you here. Did he say, Father, he just got his old coat. Walked out the door. Because he realized. She could have crossed over. Can you get something out of the door? I don't know why. Preaching all this serious stuff this morning. We're supposed to be having fun around here. We're supposed to be, you know, whooping it up and shouting victory. Yeah. This is a Pentecostal church. All right. I told somebody, maybe we ought to quit all this jumping and running and singing and shouting and get the preaching going so that we'll have something to shout about whenever we get to preach. I tell you, there's nothing better than when we hit the altar and we all repent and we all cry out to God and we all confess everything that's going on in our life and the Spirit of God comes sweeping in the church out and then we start shouting and dancing in the Spirit and the good things of the Lord comes to takes place in our life. I wish we could do that this morning. It would be all right with me if we would just shout the victory, but we might have to repent of a few things first. We might need to come around the front instead of just, you know, a little ritual. We go through this little, little, little formal routine and, you know, we just come and, and rub our brow, pat our curls in place and say, oh, Jesus, help us. It would be really good. We could hear some of that old-fashioned travail prayer. Anybody ever heard that? Anybody ever heard somebody praying? 
until you can see it. Oh, last Sunday morning, I, I, some of, we were having a worship service. I don't know if y'all remember or not, but somebody went over here and prayed for a little girl, and she squealed out loud in church, and you could just feel the presence of God. We got one sister in the church. I don't know where she's at this morning. But she goes out of war hoop every once in a while when she feels the presence of God just right. And it's just like music to my soul because it causes my soul to pray. But it's kind of hard to pray when you're regarding iniquity. It's got your attention. You're looking at it. You think about it. You obsess about it. And that's the focus of your attention. You know, you really can't have sin in your life without it really taking over your whole life. And the problem with sin is kind of like cancer. Cancer ain't so bad it wouldn't grow, but it grows and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it kills you. And that little sin that you've got that you're regarding in your heart, if you don't want the preacher to deal with, you don't want the preacher to talk about it, and you don't want the preacher to preach about it, and you want it to be hid, and it's none of anybody's business, but it's God's business, and it's the business of the kingdom of God, and God's trying to save your lost soul. Oh, it would be really good for you to understand. God wants you to root it out. Right. Not just part of it, but pull it out. Root and all. Right. Get it out and get rid of it and be excited about God and focus on the coming of Jesus right. instead of your sin. you, but this fake revival, this, this, this revival that don't really mean anything, this revival that's all hoop de doop and, and no repentance, I want the real, I want tears on the altar, I want groaning in the house of God, I want real repentance, I want you to go home feeling like you're a bad person so that you'll change, I want you to feel so bad in the house of God that you will repent of your sin and the joy of the Lord will be placed Ain't nothing like the joy of the Lord. David wrote in one of those psalms uh, all day long. I resisted God. I held on to my sin. But when I repented, all of my all of my condemnation was gone. Is that about every experience? You feel condemnation. You feel guilty. You feel like a scumbag. You feel like the worst kind of person there is. And you get out and you really earnestly seek the Lord. And you pray and you seek God. And suddenly, the blood begins to be applied. And suddenly, you begin to feel better. And you don't feel like you're that worthless shred of human debris that the devil says that you are. But you're a child of God. And you can get up and say, I can boldly say, amen, that there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. From all the condemnation and when I go to prayer, I can believe that God's going to answer my prayer because I'm not going to regard iniquity in my heart anymore. Right, right. I'm not going to be focused on what feels good anymore. I'm going to be focused on what He wants me to do. Because that's what it's all about. It's not about you having as much fun as you can down here. It's about you making God happy. says, angels rejoice for one sinner repents. One sin. Let's stand to our feet, everybody. I think I've gone long enough in this little Bible study. I think there's somebody that we can change. I think there's somebody that it's like you're in the balance and you want to do a little different. Mm. Let's just worship the Lord a little while. Right where you're at. If you don't mind, I'm just going to go around the house of God praying for people this morning. And if you don't want me to pray for you, you just let me know. Amen. God bless our friends.